If you're flying on VATSIM, stop what you're doing and start using all these tricks. Hey everyone, it's Hotchmania, and today I've got a list of the best VATSIM secrets you aren't using. You know, it always astounds me that there are tricks of the trade when it comes to flying on VATSIM, which is an online flying network for Microsoft Flight Simulator and X-Plane and P3D, that basically that allows you to make your life as a pilot a heck of a lot easier. When you're flying on a network and there's air traffic control, there's enough things happening within your own cockpit that you've got to manage that if you can save yourself a step, a second, or a bit of grief, it's absolutely worth it. So I've got my list of things that you probably aren't doing on VATSIM that you should absolutely start doing. Number one, if you are flying in the United States and there's no air traffic control on, or you're trying to plan a flight with air traffic control that's on, but you're not quite close enough to the airport to hear or see the ATIS, then you should really check a website called DATIS. DATIS is a actual real world aviation website that lists the digital ATISs from real world airports in the United States to give you an idea of what their current setup is. Now, if you're looking at the real world, odds are what's happening in VATSIM is going to mirror that. This is really helpful when you're trying to plan out your flight. And again, when it comes to airports that you're flying into or departing from, that are not controlled with air traffic control, then you're gonna make sure you're doing the right thing and you're not being one of those guys who's flying into the wrong runway or using the wrong approach. So all you have to do is go to the DATIS website and there's a pull down option with every single airport in the US that is supported by it. Now, not every single airport in the US has support here on the DATIS website. It requires the airport to have a digital ATIS on their end, but most of the major airports and even minor airports do use this functionality and it is a game changer for planning your flights here in the U.S. Now, I'm not aware of any other similar websites for places like Europe or Australia or Asia or Africa or South America. So if you're familiar with a website like this, for like Diatus, for other parts of the world, please let me know in the comments below. Maybe we can also expand our horizons there. Next up, speaking of Atis, how about getting the Atis without listening to it? So here's the situation. You're on VATSIM and there is an air traffic controller on and you've got to figure out what's the departing runway, what's the arrival runway, what's the winds, the altimeter. So traditionally what you'll do is you'll get the ATIS frequency that the air traffic controller is running and you're going to tune it in your radio. This requires you to not only tune to the radio, but also switch frequencies temporarily in order to hear that. This is going to require a little bit of effort on your part because number one, you've got to tune the radio. Number two, you've got to sit there and wait for it. Maybe you tune in and it's already halfway through the message. Now you got to listen to it again, right? Well, it's a lot easier than this. Go into your V-Pilot or X-Pilot client and just double click on the ATIS on the left side. When you do this, all the ATIS information will be displayed just as if you listen to it, but requires you not to have to tune into it, requires you not have to change frequency, so that way you can still listen to the air traffic controller, and it's always stored in your client, so that way you don't have to worry about, oh gosh, what was the runway they're using, or what's the current winds? You can double click on it each and every time you want to use it. This saves so much time, and more importantly, you don't have to be that pilot who's on frequency asking the controller what runway to expect. My next tip is to use charts. Now, I think many of you probably know you should be using your charts for whatever you're flying, right? To ensure that you're following proper procedures. And there's a lot of great resources like Navigraph that are out there to provide charts or even for flight. But the problem is those cost money. So what happens if you don't have the budget for using you know, a real world chart provider to give you all the information? Are you out of luck? Well, no, really, you can use a website called chartfox.org. Chartfox.org is a free, no additional cost website to use. You don't even have to register for it or anything. And it allows you to look at a lot of charts and get access to them for things like departures and arrivals and whatnot. When it comes to flying on VATSIM, you always want to be prepared. You always want to make sure you understand what's required of you as the pilot. Certainly, air traffic control is going to expect that of you. And chartfox.org is a wonderful resource. Now, of course, just like the DA's website earlier, it doesn't have every single chart that's out there, but it's a good starting point, especially for flying in the United States. One of my favorite reasons to fly on a network like VATSIM is for the air traffic control during events. There's a lot of events that are out there. So if you're ever sitting there thinking to yourself, oh, where should I fly today or tomorrow? My advice is look at the VATSIM calendar. There's a VATSIM calendar for different regions, depending on the country that's being operated on. There's a VATSIM USA calendar. There's a general VATSIM calendar. There's a VATSIM Europe. You get the idea. But what you want to do is go to the website and look at the calendar of events for ideas because this is going to give you days and times in which you can count on air traffic control being online and a lot of other traffic around it. Some events are more popular than others, but things like Friday Night Ops or otherwise known as FNOs are really popular here in the U.S. And likewise, there's overload events and crossfire events. Anyway, they're fun. 
because this is the closest to really real world simulation you're going to find with full air traffic control and a lot of other pilots to contend with. So make sure you look at the VATSIM calendar for an idea of events. So far, we've had two different tips about ATISs in VATSIM. I've got number three right now for you. So this is, again, another easy way to get the ATIS for you. Let's say you're flying right now. Here's another way to get your ATIS. Pull up your vPilot client and put .metar, .metar, and then the airport ICAO code, and that will give you the IRL METAR for any airport that doesn't have an active ATIS available. It's a great little tip from my friend Arch NDA, who does a great job controlling over in SoCal, and I didn't know about this one. This is a good little tip right there. Something else you probably aren't doing is checking for a preferred route. So again, in an effort not to be that guy, if you're flying regional routes, a good idea is to check the RTAC website for preferred routes for flying these smaller, shorter routes. Usually there's pre-made routes for popular airports and controllers will love you if you use these preferred routes. All you have to do is simply Google the RTAC you're in. So, you know, Boston RTAC or maybe it's Jacksonville RTAC or Los Angeles RTAC, and you basically go to their website, and they, if they have them available, of course, they'll have preferred routing, so that way you can save yourself time. Not only will the controller love you, but it will stop you from having to do a reroute in which you ask for clearance, and they say, no, 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 no. We got to give you a full reroute here. Stand by for that. It's extra time wasted, so use these preferred routes, save you time, and make your controller happy. And lastly, something I had no idea existed because I just always overlooked it is that in both vPilot and xPilot, there is a notes tab. The notes tab is actually for you to use as a pilot to jot anything down. You know, one of the things I don't enjoy about flying on network is times in which you have to get out of the computer itself and maybe use like the real world, like, you know, taking notes on a piece of paper, which is fine and all, but it disconnects you from the experience of being integrated within the sim. So if you go to vPilot or xPilot, you'll see your messages tab, in which case obviously has all the messages that you're gonna be seeing, but also there's a notes tab there. Click on that and you can jot anything down. This doesn't go out to the network or anything like this. This is a local notes file for you to use during your session. So if you wanna jot down your clearance, runway instructions, whatever else you need to remember, maybe a grocery list for later, this is where you can go to type that in. It's an incredibly good resource and makes your life a little bit easier, especially when you're talking to a controller and that way you're not leaving your computer and not like, you know, moving offline to find a pen or a piece of paper or a scrap of paper. It's a lot easier there. So there you have it, my list of the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven VATSIM secrets you aren't using. Let me know in the comments below what other VATSIM secrets are there that I didn't list that we can all benefit from. What are the things that most people are not doing that they should be doing in VATSIM? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers, and I really appreciate your help if we can do so. This has been Hotch Mania, and we'll talk again real soon.